Hey guys, how how's things going? <laughs> so, you know, this is my first time I could just actually just kind of um, chill out, relax, you know, because to tell you the truth, I've been running around. Let me just put a little bit of highlighter on. I got out of work, you know, I work on Saturdays, but then I have set Sunday, um, you know, Monday and Tuesday off, so... Um, so I got out of work Saturday and sun Saturday I didn't do anything. Uh, I got this nice Morphe stuff. Um, I did make a video of my haul. Um, I also have a lot of other videos that I need to kind of like piece together, which I never had a chance to do yet, but let's put on some of this Morph, Morph or Morphe. <clears throat> this is a really pretty color. Let's see. All right. Yeah, I mean, that's nice, right? I don't know. It's only $10, so it's not bad. Uh, and it's very, like, matte. I like matte, but I wanted to get a nice gloss, like a nice lip gloss, too. Because I got this more stuff. And I got this really good perfume that smells so fantastic. You know? <laughs> but anyways, um... I didn't do anything really exciting on Saturday, but that's okay because I just wanted to relax, you know? Like, so, what did I do? I don't know. <laughs> hey, my hair looks kind of iffy. Cool, right? Um, Sunday, I didn't go to church. Um, I went to the gym in the morning. I went, you know, and then there's a Super Bowl thing and, like, Mike... I wanted to ask Mike what he wanted to do for Super Bowl. Like, I was going to get food and hang out in my house and watch it. But Mike's like, you know, he already, I guess he contacted Weston and Lauren. And because we've been watching Super Bowl at their house for the past three years. And they have a super huge house. It's really nice. Um, <clears throat> but I guess he contacted them, you know. So he's like, I'm going there if you want to go. He didn't, he kind of didn't even like acted like he wanted me to go. So I'm like. Did you want to go? Like, I mean, you know, if you don't want me to go, then I won't go. And I'm kind of upset because I did go. And I was really upset. Well, I didn't show it, but in my head I was like, let me put some of this on my eyes. It's a little bit of purple. I'm not going anywhere. I just feel like putting makeup on. I'm weird like that. So, um... I have a funny, embarrassing story, too, <laughs> to tell. But anyways, um, so I went over there. We went there, and last year they had food. Last year, and they had, like, they used to have people over and stuff, but now they have a kid, so they don't really. And luckily, Mike got a German pizza because we went there. You know, when you, you think about a Super Bowl party or whatever, you think about, like, all kinds of food, you know, snacks and, like, snackers and nachos and, like, you know, um, chili and dogs, <laughs> dogs, and like, you know, all kinds of food, right? That's what you think of. I have this mascara. I haven't used it yet. That was called Falsy Slash Lift. But that's what you think about when you think about the Super Bowl. You think about having like a beer or so. I just bought it t tonight because um, I didn't drink, you know, at all. Like, but I just feel like everyone now. Um, yeah, I didn't drink any beer last night either, but that's okay. I, I almost was like, I'm not going to get any tonight, but I always end up because I get bored and, you know, I just do. But, um, yeah, and I'm like, there's no food or nothing, and I'm just like, and they have a really big TV, like an 80-inch TV, but it's like super, like, they keep it quiet, so you get, like, I want to, see, for me, I kind of like watching the Super Bowl because I like to look for occult symbolism, you know? Because I, I don't know, like, we used to have a Facebook group and we used to always analyze everything going on. And the one lady that was really good at it and she actually, um, she actually re related that song Bye Bye Miss American Pie with the Super Bowl. And, like, the, the lyrics actually kind of revealed some revelations and things actually was synchronizing or if it was planned, I don't know. But it actually kind of synchronized with things that were going on in the Super Bowl. Um, 
but I noticed a couple things. She died though, so she was really good at deci deciphering things. Um, you know, I always see symbolism, or I don't always see it, but I try to, and I try to, um, I try to like see uh, hidden meanings or whatever. Like, um, you know, it's car commercials. Like, I like to watch the Super Bowl commercials, but I also like to look for any hidden meanings because it's very, um, uh, everything is kind of like hidden in plain sight kind of thing. So you have to kind of be looking for it to know. And like, they're talking during the commercials and I'm like, you know, the dogs are barking and everything. And it's like, like, that's what I like to do is I like to analyze the commercials and all this stuff. And I also made a prediction before they even freaking anybody won and i said 49 i said four the 49ers four plus nine because it was a simpsons prediction saying the 49ers are gonna win but obviously they didn't win you know but um but uh i said four plus nine is 13 i'm like 13 is the magical number and i'm like you know, 13, is, there's going to be a 13 somewhere there, I'm sure, right? Anyways, um, so what happened was they won with the 31, the Chiefs, and it was 11 points more than the um, 49ers. So the 31 is a reverse 13, and these are very, like, significant numbers. 11 is a significant number, and so is 13, and... You know, I think football is very much like, you know, this like kind of Greek like um, type of thing, you know, this old, you know, what they used to do, the sports. And I think it's very symbolic, actually. And, you know, if you really look into it, if you're interested, even the whole Kobe Bryant thing, you know, they do rituals like that before like events such as the Super Bowl and then the Oscars and the or the Grammy Awards. Yeah, the Grammy Awards is very... They have rituals going on. Like when Whitney Houston died, that was like, was that a sacrifice? Look into it. They need their sacrifice. It was Kobe Bryant this year. And there's a lot of like weird things around surrounding Kobe Bryant. They even do predictive programming. If you saw that like little commercial that showed him like dying in a thing. But predictive programming has been around for quite some time. So I don't think, I don't care if you think I'm crazy or whatever. You know, that's just what I kind of like research and whatnot. And, um. It's all like connected in like this really weird ways. And this, even the Super Bowl halftime show is kind of like an homage to like, you know, what they believe and they want every, they want to kind of like cast a little spell on everybody. But you can look into that if you want. There's plenty of that stuff like on YouTube or whatever. Just go to a cold like Super Bowl rituals or stuff like that. <laughs> That's what I like to read about. And I've been reading about that for a long time. Because a lot of weird things happen to me. But that's a different story. Um, speaking of weird things, you know, like people who, is, like, I don't know. I don't even care anymore at this point. I'm just like, you know what? Do I have any, like, kind of weird stalkers? Or what the fuck is going on? Likewise, I really don't give a shit. You know, I'm just going to live my life. I'm going to do what I have to do. Let me put some bronzer on. And lately, I've been going to the gym, you know, all the time working out. You know, trying to get healthy that's what I'm doing I you know like I feel healthier and stuff so yeah I'm still I'm still drinking beer I know I get bored and I mean I'm bored so let me just drink some beer and watch Curb Your Enthusiasm or whatever I want to watch you know it's kind of late right now um oh I haven't drank in a while though to tell you the truth well last week Jimmy came over but he I get bored and then it's like, but you know what? I haven't went out in a while, a long time. But anyways, <clears throat> um, yeah, so like I'm working out and kind of losing weight, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. When, so today, um, what did I do? To, oh, I had a doctor's appointment. Oh no, I have, so I have, um, a recruiter that contacted me and wanted to speak to me for a long time, right? to talk to me about it. and I was thinking about going back in the army for a while <coughs> so anyways so today I finally went to talk to the recruiter and it was up in um it was um like about 20 minutes for me so it was at 10 this morning you know 
I want to put some like, you know, a little bit of bronze, like highlighter or whatever. But yeah, it was like at 10 in the morning. So uh, I woke up and then I went there, you know, to see what he had to say. I told him beforehand that I had a DUI and he said, that's no problem, right? So he doesn't know that I've had four DUIs. Yeah, I have. I've had, but I don't drink and drive anymore because I really, no, but I did like, when I was like dating this guy that's like bad for me, okay? I feel like I'm gonna lift this phone up a little bit so it's a little bit more higher. Hold on. Okay, that's a little bit better because I want the top of my, I want you to see the top of my hair, right? Um, let's try one more. This is the Tower of Babel. Just kidding. Oh, perfect and i want to close that door because that door's like bothering me i want to do a funny skit about like like um like twerking uh tutorials like they look so easy when they twerk and then when like a girl with no rhythm twerks i can't even twerk and i like no rhythm anyways but that's for another story <laughs> that's for another day <laughs> like a like a joke you know because when i twerk it's like when i try to twerk i have like no rhythm and i can't even but anyways, um, <laughs> so, like, I was like, I want to talk to the recruiter and see what he has to say, you know, because that might be kind of interesting if I can go into the National Guard. You know, how hard is that? Um, and I was prior service, so I don't have to, I don't know. <laughs> so I went there today and, like, he was telling me I have a whole packet of things that I need to get done, but it seems kind of, I would like to go back in the military. I actually would. And I really think I would be good at it. Um, I've been, you know, like I'm older now, so I'm able to, uh, I, like, I was, like, fresh out of high school when I went in, you know, before. And, but if I could go, I might even have a chance. They said I could go back as my old MOS. And if I did that, I would get a bonus. Um, my old MOS was 98 golf, but now it's, like, called 35 Lima. It's a linguist. It's military intelligence. And I was at the Presidio Monterey, like, learning Spanish. So I would like to, maybe I could do that, do that again. But I would be gone for, like, a long time. And then I would have to get my MOS training after that because I would have to learn a language. Then I'd have to get my job training, you know. But, yeah, we'll see. Like, we'll see about that. Um, you know, but I'm, like, they do have to do a background check and all that. And I do need to get people to write, um write good letters about me like you know she could do it like she's a good judge she's a good character like you know all this stuff so mm. but they did pull up and they pull up my record and they're gonna see DUIs and I'm like kind of worried because I never had a felony but I've had when I was like 22 with my ex-boyfriend um I don't know I was driving and I wrecked my car I flipped it over and you know, got DUI, and then I was also driving with this other guy who's an idiot, and I got, like, I was, I used to drive around and not care, you know, and I got another DUI, and then I got one in Pennsylvania, like, right after that. This all happened around the same time, you know, and then I got one, I had my last one, which is, like, um, six years ago, um, yeah, like, I talked about my DUIs before, um, I did go to jail for it, you know, um, yeah, like, it's terrible, like, you know, uh, I certainly do not do that anymore, like, I don't drink and drive, I take Ubers, like, if I'm gonna meet friends and if they're out, <sighs> or I'll have somebody pick me up, but I'm not gonna drive, um, I'll stay home and drink some beer, you know, like I'm doing right now, but, um, I definitely can't have a DUI, but I understand that, but I'm just, like, really nervous, like, if that's going to hinder me from going back into the military, you know, um, but I guess we'll see about that. But I think it would be really good for me. It would make me feel like I'm doing something, you know, um, meaningful with life, you know, and I just like being in the military. I've always liked that feeling. There's a certain feeling, um, that the military has that civilian life doesn't. And I wanted to talk about some things. So, you know, when you're like, younger you know when everything is 
so new and the world is new like you're in high school and you're just like thinking about your plans what you want to do with your life you know and you're just or whatever you're just young and things are you know crazy um you know you think about college or whatever you're thinking about mm -hmm. you're thinking about leaving you know whatever everything feels so like there's certain feelings you know that you get like certain things like you know you're around people like a peer group or like you go somewhere and the building reminds you of something or it smells there's a certain smell you know like a certain um you know what i'm saying like a building or whatever like um you know or like you're just like part you feel like part of something like part of a group like you're going to school or well, the military, you definitely feel like part of something, you know, and it's just a feeling that you can't explain unless you were in the military. Like, you know, like it's not like being a civilian. You feel there's a certain feeling, you know, there just is. And like I went to basic training in Fort Jackson to Fort Jackson and that was like so like playing soldier, like playing in the I mean, you're learning skills and all that, but. You know, you're, you're shooting, you're shooting. I wanted to ask my, the recruiter about the M16, like shooting that and stuff, like on the range, like, you know, you get your M16 and you, you learn a serial number and everything and you learn how to do drills and like all that stuff, you know, and then you do PT and like, there's a lot, you know, that you learn being a soldier, but like, I wouldn't have to go back to basic training, but I would still need a refresher course on like being a soldier. I definitely would. He says it comes back to you. I don't know. I would have to take drills, you know. But since I was already in prior, I don't think I would have, I don't, he says I don't have to go to basic training again, which is good because I would be going in basic training with like a bunch of kids out of high school and I'm like, you know, much older than that, <laughs> you know, um, but I still have to do a PT test, but the PT test changed from when I was there, you know, like they go by a point system or something like that, <laughs> but you know, I'm working out. I think I, I can do it, you know? Um, I went to airborne school in Fort Benning, like, I was, you know, I just was so young and, like, didn't try, but airborne school had a certain feeling about that. It just totally reminded me of something, like, from the 19, like, 40s. Like, there was a certain feeling just about that whole base, you know, but it was really cool there, but it was definitely a cool time, you know, and, like, people, like, the rigor, like, they had, they're the ones that pack the, um, things for the, uh, the jumps, you know, the packs, that was like in a big thing and they all packed that and like, they listen to country music and all stuff like, you know, like there's all kinds of people in, in the army, like you're just going to meet all kinds of people from different ways of life and from different, um, you know, states, cities or whatever, like seriously, um, but, <coughs> you know, I was at Fort Benning for like a month. I got pneumonia while I was there. So, uh, yeah. Mm. It was crazy. But, um, then I went off to Presidio of Monterey Defense Language Institute, which is in California. That's like a language school. So they have Spanish. They have, um, you know, they were teaching French, Arabic, Persian, Farsi, all kinds of different languages, Japanese, you know. I was learning Spanish though, because like my score was good enough for Spanish. Um, but yeah, they had all have all that. Like, but imagine if I could go back into that. That would be so surreal for me because I was there when I was younger, and it would feel like I'm revisiting an old dream or a past life. Like if I end up going back to where I was when I was 18 years old, and but I'm a different. Like I'm not. You know, when I was younger, I was like different mind frame and everything but to me that would feel so surreal it would feel like I traveled back in time or it would just feel really weird I think it was like because I met like I had a boyfriend that I, I he was such a good guy too and I think he would have liked to us me and him to get married but like he's not there anymore and he was only 19 like now you know, he's older, he has a family and stuff, but that's what it remind me of. And because we, yeah, like all this stuff, like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, like I could say stories of like being in the army and memories I've had and stuff, but I feel like I'm talking too much. But anyways, that's like a lot that's like 
on my mind right now because I talked to the guy and I'm like, yeah, I would definitely go back and and be in the National Guard, like, you know, why not, right? So, but today, um, so I had an appointment to talk, to talk with the recruiter and I was there for like over an hour and I had to like pee. I was like, is there a restroom here? Or the latrine, I said the restroom. And I was looking around for it and it was like, it wasn't a recruiter's office. It was like in a, it was actually like in a, um, whatever the buildings are called. And I'm walking around the buildings and I see military. I look, at, I, I didn't know where to go. And I saw like a garage and I saw like military vehicles and stuff like that. And the guy was like, are you lost? Are you looking for the restroom? But like, I was walking through the, the hallway. So it was like all dark and like, see, I'm like, so, you know how you play video games and you're walking through like, an old like oh like an empty warehouse or like an empty place you know and it just feels like crazy like I was walking through this so I was like I liked it because it just gives you a certain feeling and I was like looking for the bathrooms and I was like going down this long dark corridor the lights would turn on as I was walking and I was like it was like kind of cool but you know <laughs> like I don't know I just like that you know like I like that like kind of way <laughs> If that makes sense, if you get what I'm saying, but, but yeah, so, and it was really cool, like, being around, like, people that are, like, in the military, because, like, you know, I don't know, just something, you know, and I was in the army, and I was, like, it's just, it's a certain feeling, whatever, <laughs> so, like, I'm, like, just thinking about that, you know, then after that, I had to go home, and, like, I kind of just, like, ate some food or whatever, and then, mm. I got my HelloFresh for this week too, but HelloFresh, like I'm trying to lose weight and be healthy and they have a lot of red meat. I don't really eat red meat too much and they have like, um, a lot of sour cream stuff like for sauces and whatnot. So, um, then I had a doctor's appointment about my, um, medication and stuff like that. It's really quick, you know, um, it's always like a quick ordeal. Like I just go there and, and then I get a refill from my hydroxyzine and hydroxyzine yeah and whatever else I'm on um for my thyroid and like for the Lexapro um yeah so so just did that and then after Marvel had to go to the vet because she needed to get her shots so she so I brought her to the vet and she was like you know the whole time but um yeah and then after that, I called Angie because I haven't talked to her in a while. And she asked me if I wanted to go to the gym with her. I'm like, yeah, I'll go. So we went to her gym, Planet Fitness, because you could bring, you know, guests. And we did, um, you know, we were on the elliptical for a good 25 minutes. And then we were on the, I went on the treadmill. We were, and then um, stair climber. And then we did some, like, weights and all that, you know. Then after that, I went to her house and she made me a salad and with turkey and that was pretty healthy and good now look at me drinking my calories back with beer and like i noticed that my stomach is getting flatter and feeling much better but then like i'm drinking like big calorie beer like seriously mm. but uh yeah i am determined to like be healthy to be like do something with my life you know I have, like, this person watching, like, my videos, and, like, I don't know what they're doing, and it's kind of, like, weird and scary, like, are they, they live around me, and, like, are they, like, contacting my job? I don't even know how long I want to be at Walmart. To tell you the truth, I'm going to be in a, I'm going to try to go back, I want to go back in the military, and figure things out, and if I go to school, they can pay back my student loans and all that, and We'll see, but, like, I'm just trying to do stuff with my life, you know. Just trying to do stuff with my life. That's all. Anyways, I am rambling on. This is almost 25 minutes. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.